You can now make mid-journey images on the internet without Discord, but that's not even the main gist. We now have some of the most incredible features available on Midjourney's new alpha website. Here's what you probably didn't know about Midjourney's alpha website. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Honestly, this changes everything. Midjourney creates some of the very best AI images, but despite having over 17.5 million users for some reason, not everyone was quick to jump on the hype train because of one problem access. With Midjourney being built in Discord, people often encountered various challenges when navigating the platform. In simple words, it sucked. But thank goodness, Midjourney Alpha has now been released, and we can now explore powerful tools like lightboxing, remixing, and tons of other features, all through a streamlined interface. But uh, the website is only open to users who have made over 10,000 images with Midjourney's Discord server. If you want to know how many you've created, just go over to Discord and type forward slash info in the message box. If you are eligible, simply head over to alpha.midjourney.com and start crafting your masterpieces. But even if you haven't reached that number, no worries because pretty soon, the team will be expanding access to more users, and we expect future announcements for beta phases for alternate access methods. The company's founder, David Holes, has said that the website will become more widely available in the coming months, so here's what you need to know about Midjourney's Alpha website. The Alpha website looks a lot similar to the current one, but there are a couple of changes which are quite huge. First off, we get to see a live Imagine bar at the top, and believe it or not, that's where the magic happens. All you need to do is type in your prompt straight away. No need for the forward slash. Once you put in your prompt, click on the Generate button to initiate the image generation process. You will see your images in full resolution. Just like Discord, you'll receive a series of four images generated in response. By default, these images are created in the 9 by 16 aspect ratio. Next, you can then fine-tune your creations using parameters. For those who don't know what parameters are, they are simply technical instructions, which you can add to your prompt by typing dash dash, the parameter code, and the value. You can do this on the website. Alternatively, you could click the settings button and open the parameter panel. You will find intuitive sliders and tags to help you tweak your choices. You could also adjust aspect ratios, chaos or variety as it is now called, aesthetic styles and model versions to get your perfect artistic blend. We also need to talk about the plus icon in the Imagine Bar. It allows you to add more inspirational images to your prompt, but here's the good news. You no longer need to paste the image URL like you would have done with Discord. On top of that, it remembers all the images that you have used in the past, which is quite amazing because it was such a bummer trying to find images after losing track of their URL. Another thing to keep in mind is that typing dash dash IW or image weight makes the image a lot more important. So, if your favorite parameter isn't showing in the parameter channel, then it's maybe time to do things the old school way and type it directly into your prompt using the dash dash command. Also, if you love blending images, all you need to do is drag those images into the imagine box and click enter. You really don't need any text prompts. I particularly love the fact that you can easily see the images that you blended together because they show up as the prompt. Meanwhile, it wasn't a little hard to remember the images we used in the blend, so that's another cool thing about using this web version. So, if we were to summarize the key reasons why we love the Midjourney web version, here's what it would look like. Image Generation the website's image generation is top-notch. It is speedy, intuitive, and straightforward. Gone are the days of navigating text commands and clunky menus. The Alpha website gets the job done much more efficiently with a dedicated prompt bar for creating your images, parameter sliders for some fine-tuning, and a thumbnail strip for effortlessly browsing past generations. Overall, one of the things we really find exciting is that the consistency and coherence to prompts are much stronger. In version 6 Alpha, than with its predecessors. Besides, the V6 base model has a much better ability to accurately follow longer prompts, which is something we want for more detailed image creation. Lightboxing, remixing, and upscaling. 
Isolating and examining your favorite creations in a dedicated space allows you to appreciate it better. You could also experiment with variations of your prompt in a single click for unlimited possibilities. On top of that, you can enhance the resolution of your creation or artwork to uncover hidden details. The improved upscalers with both subtle and creative modes increases resolution by 2x and makes your art appear more refined and lifelike compared to the V5.2. Explore and describe. You can discover the prompts and works of other mid-journey users and draw the needed inspiration to fuel your own artistic venture. The Explore tab gives you access to hundreds of publicly available prompts for you to play around with. Finally, we also have some minor text drawing ability with the V6, which I think is pretty cool. All of these updates and additions guarantee greater user control, which is something we all want to have. But like we said at the beginning of the video, we couldn't talk about the positives without mentioning some of mid journey's problems. If you stayed up until this point, think you could take a second to hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really goes a long way in supporting us. Thanks, guys. Text Rendering Quite a number of creatives jumped ships once Dali 3 was released, mostly because of one reason text. With Midjourney not improving much in their real text ability, many people are favoring Dali 3, saying that it gets their prompts closer to what they want than Midjourney. But what are your thoughts about this? Personally, I feel it really depends on what you want. Midjourney seems to have better artistic image generation ability than Dali 3, but falls short when it comes to text. So for now, text must be written in quotations, and Midjourney recommends using style raw or lower stylized values. Another area that could use a facelift is Midjourney's file structure. It is also quite easy to see that Midjourney needs a file structure. After all, what is the point in generating tons of images if there aren't any means to sort them out into select groups or categories? The Alpha website is surely a step forward, but it could be a lot better. What do you reckon? I'd love to see something like a search by parameters or search by date feature as well. Another area that is a little concerning is perhaps Midjourney's somewhat questionable approach to copyright. Being trained on billions of images scraped from the web means that Midjourney has been accused of some copyright infringement. To prevent further threats to the platform's growth, I'm pretty sure the Midjourney team would be looking to sort out these problems, because at the moment, V6's improved photorealism is raising important questions and debates about generative AI tech, image rights, and deep fakes. Personally, I'm of the opinion that the technology itself should not bear the brunt of problems for its potential misuse, because literally any good thing can be misused, but what are your thoughts? Despite the obvious step up, we shouldn't be quick to forget that the Midjourney Alpha website is still under development and in its early stages. Obviously, this means that it is far from perfect at the moment, but the company seems to be pretty much headed in the right direction with these improvements. We can look forward to things like in-painting and more exciting features in the coming months. While V6 offers advanced capabilities, it also prevents a learning curve for us users who are accustomed to V5.2. Understanding the nuances of how the V6 interprets prompts differently is important if we want to make the most out of our Midjourney experience. As with some of the previous version releases, Midjourney has told users that they could expect frequent changes without prior notice as they work towards a full release. That being said, some of the biggest beneficiaries are small businesses, without design and branding capabilities, as they can now create better promotional content and engaging social media posts using Midjourney Alpha. At the end of the day, Midjourney's Alpha website is going to be a game changer for AI image generation, and quite frankly, we couldn't have asked for a better holiday present. But there's just one thing. If you are an OG Midjourney user, you need to know about some of Midjourney's craziest and most mind-blowing prompts. It's something we've covered in this next video.